To begin using VVols, we will first register the VASA provider running on the VMAX 3 storage array. We'll begin by providing a name for the provider. Then we will enter the URL to connect to the provider running on the storage array itself and the appropriate credentials. When we click OK, the VASA provider will register with vCenter. And then we can click the Synchronize button to update all the storage details. In the Storage Provider Details pane in the lower part of the interface, we can see information about the provider itself, including the URL. We can see additional vendor information that might be provided. And then clicking on the array that's registered to that provider, we can see information about the protocols that are supported, as well as the supported capability profiles. Once the VASA provider has been registered, the VMware administrator can begin creating VVOLs based data stores. Each VVOL data store will map directly to a storage container that has been created by the storage administrator. Specify the type as VVOL. Select the storage container that this data store will map to. Select the host that will mount this data store and then click Finish. We'll go ahead and create a second VVOL data store. Select the data center it will live in. Again, select the type as VVOL. And then select the storage container that this data store will map to. Select the host that will mount the new data store, and then click Finish. Here we can see the new data stores that we've created. If we drill into that data store, we can see the capabilities that have been specified by the storage administrator, as well as the protocol endpoints that are being used to access this data store. Here we see the host that we're connected to. We drill in from the host view. We can see more information about the protocol endpoints. You'll notice here that these paths are being managed by PowerPath. and we can see the data stores that are available behind each protocol endpoint. Next, we will create two new VM storage policies by clicking into the Policies and Profiles area of the vSphere Web Client and clicking on VM Storage Policies. You'll see here there are already some policies created, and in the description field we've indicated which service level on the VMAX 3 each policy aligns itself to. We'll click to create a new storage policy. The first one we will name Gold and give it the description indicating which service level this policy will align to. Next, we'll go into the Rule Set. And here we'll select the VASA provider to provide our capabilities. Our first capability will be the Performance Index, which we will enter as Gold to map to the VMAX service level. We'll use the workload hint to indicate this is for a decision support system, or DSS. And then our host I.O. limits will be set to the default of unlimited. We'll click Next. Once the rule set is processed, we'll see the list of storage that is compatible with our new policy that we've created. Click Next. And Finish. Then we'll go in and create one more storage policy. In this case, we will map to the diamond service level defined on the VMAX 3. So we'll name the policy and enter our description. And then we'll go into the rule sets. Select 
select our provider. For our performance index, we will enter diamond to map to that service level on the VMAX 3. And our workload hint will be OLTP. And again, we'll use the default host IO limit of unlimited. Click next, and again, we'll see the list of compatible data stores. And again, we'll click next, and then finish. Now let's create a new VVOL-based virtual machine. We'll click the Create New VM button. As we step into the wizard, we will name our virtual machine and select the data center as well as the compute resources that this machine will deploy to. And then when we get to the storage screen, you'll notice at the top from the pull down, we will select the storage policy that we want to deploy this virtual machine against. So we'll pick the diamond policy. And here we have a VVOL data store that's compatible with that policy. Click Next and step through the remaining pieces of the new virtual machine wizard. And then at the end, we'll click Finish. We can use the recent tasks panel to watch our progress as the virtual machine is created. You can see here that the virtual machine is done. Next, we'll clone the stockbroker trading VM we just created and take advantage of the TimeFinder Snap VX capability of the VMAX 3 to offload the cloning and the copy of this VM to the array. So we'll name this one Stockbroker Analytics VM. Of course, we'll land in the same data center, select our compute resources, and then when we select our storage, we're going to deploy this one to a different storage policy. So we'll pick the gold policy from the pull down. And then we'll select a different container. We don't need any of the additional cloning options. And then we'll click finish. Use the recent tasks panel again to monitor the progress of our clone operation, which will happen relatively quickly. And again, TimeFinder Snap VX is being used to actually perform the clone on the back end storage array. Here we're running an iometer profile against our two VMs that we just created on the left. We have the diamond storage policy with the OLTP workload, and on the right, on the gold storage policy, uh, we've got our analytics VM with the DSS workload. And you'll notice the IOPS that we're achieving on each are significantly different. Here what we've done is on the back end, we have dynamically changed the analytics VM to apply the platinum storage policy. And you'll notice that the IOPS on that VM have, have nearly tripled. So we can dynamically dial up or dial back performance based on the VMAX 3 service levels and the storage policies provided through vSphere.